in Burlington, and behind me is the King Street Dip. Have you ever wondered why this dip exists? Well, back in the 1800s, there was a ravine that was about a mile long, and it bisected the city of Burlington. And you can see steep inclines to the right and to the left. They are the remnants of the ravine. We're gonna do a deep dive and talk to historians and engineers and map geeks about this ravine that shaped our town. And then when I started to realize that it had so much of a role in what the identity of Burlington was, it really spoke to me. The scale of it as it was described in, in the pictures, I said, wow, there's a huge hole in the ground there, and, and it's not there anymore. It's right here. This whole giant area. It's right here. Wow. You'd never know it. No, that's what I find so fascinating. But then the 1872 map is the one that really shows you we surveyed this and it goes all the way from the north end down and snaking through the town all the way to where the wastewater treatment plant is today. Roughly speaking, it's about a mile and a half long. Maybe on average 15 to 20 feet deep. Oh, but wait, that's not all. In the 1850s, a railroad ran through the ravine through the center of downtown Burlington. In the 1860s, they started building a sewer in this ravine and then they filled it in. Most of it, that is. That's the sewer. <gasps> we can smell the sewer. You um, can you smell the sewer. One of the great things about Burlington is we have a lot of pride about our city. There are hidden stories uh, throughout the city. It is, uh, by New England standards, a somewhat old city, and there are stories lurking around the corners or underground. And this one underground is certainly a really fascinating story about how Burlington evolved and how the hidden ravine sewer is actually hindering Burlington's next phase of development. Behind me is a remnant of the ravine sewer. It's functioned very well for what it needed to do. It was put in place for the city to be able to grow and expand. And I think it's the point in time where we need to manage where it is and what it's doing for the city so that we can continue to grow and expand. Great Street's Main Street is just one of a dozen or so generational projects that the city is undertaking right now. The city has half a billion dollars of capital projects actively in the pipeline right now. We are an old city and we are a city that is in desperate need of capital reinvestment because most of our systems are at their end of life or beyond their end of life. In the early 1800s, the population of Burlington was under 5,000 people, and the stream inside the ravine provided drinking water. So was it a tributary of the Winooski River, or we're not sure? There is evidence that it, it may have been thousands of years ago. I think it's a great story. I mean, I, I love imagining what it would have been like to walk from my house into town and just have apple orchards to the left and to the right. The giant ravine was very coveted. It was a beautiful view with a beautiful river in it and the pure water that you could drink. I call it the Godazibo River because um, in Abenaki it means hidden brook. First thing about Orchard Terrace is that it, it dead ends. Where I'm standing now, there's 26 feet down, so you are at a terrace and you look that way you see how those buildings are further down than you would expect, right? Yes, I do. The ravine comes through here. It's just weird. <laughs> like it's this huge divot. What we're standing on is a piece of a bridge that would cross this part of the ravine so that College Street could be built. This was one of the bridges. Yeah. The library, which yeah. is right over there. Yeah. And City Market. Right. We're talking a 25 foot deep, one block wide, ravine came right. right through what we're looking at right now. Right. Well, the things that make you go, the sidewalks are also tipping. You know, it makes you ask yourself, well, what, what's going on? Okay, so it's crooked. That's what you're telling me. It's crooked. <laughs> it's crooked, okay. In the 1850s, the Vermont Central Railroad ran a train through the gully, right through the center of downtown. You'd be like, why is the train wobbling through the neighborhood and dodging houses, you know? 
It's like, well, nobody in their right mind would build it that way if they could avoid it because it's easier to just have a straight line. I can't imagine that it was easy to maintain a rail line in the midst of a ravine. It had to have been filled in during major rainstorms. There must have been slides. That was only in use for 10 or 15 years. They realigned the Vermont Central Railroad under North Avenue along the Intervale instead of through this ravine, which allowed the second kind of phase of the ravine to exist first as an informal open sewer. Well, I think probably from the beginning, it, uh, certain parts of it served as a dump. It's real easy to just toss your trash over the edge. And this mm -hmm. idea of the blacksmith falling in and breaking his arm, yeah. the horses slipping in. And then in the 70s, 1870s, 1880s, and 1890s, was built out as a brick and stone culvert, basically a sewer main to connect most of downtown to the open lake, as there were no wastewater plants at the time. The ravine sewer is currently crossing private parcels. It was the natural topography of Burlington. It was laid in the 1860s is when the ravine was transitioned from the railroad to a sewer. It started being filled and formed in the 1870s. And so the documentation through old free press records indicate different years were done on different blocks. The earliest years behind the firehouse. By the 1870s, Burlington's population was booming at almost 14,000 people, and they began to develop the downtown areas around the ravine. It hindered development of the downtown and the, the kind of lower hill section. This is hard labor, and it is the 1800s. They did segment by segment, and that allowed the land behind it to be filled, and then development as it stretched further and further along to fill in the ravine. That was a lot of material. And let's be clear, a lot of the material they used was garbage. And that's not structural soil. So there are buildings, you know, they've really had to do an extra level of uh, structural engineering in order to get a firm footing. Like the library was, at some point, was it in the 70s, it was under threat because it was built on fill. Right. You know, Burlington was not necessarily an easy place to develop. So the ravine sewer crosses the hood plant parking lot, as it's referred to, underneath the ground here, um, as it comes out towards Maple Street. So we do see larger flows through this section of the ravine being closer to the wastewater plant. We have a lot of water that's collected by this point. This is the pond! This is the pond. Um, that's what I thought, it's in between King and Maple. Yes. Yeah. So this was pond, King Street was pond. The size of this depression is evident of the fact it was hard to fill. Here we are installing brand new catch basins, brand new sewer pipe that's 48 inches in size. They're working on setting up what's called bypass pumping. And so in order to do the work that they're gonna do in the Maple Church intersection, they have to move the water from its current location around their work and back into the pipe network that it goes into. But the plan is to take the pipe off of the private parcels and to bring it back into the roadway. So the pipe will go from here at Maple Street up to Main Street, up this corridor. We do need to connect into it down in the King Street dip. It's kind of one of those areas that everyone's talked about, the ravine sewers, historic location and still actually being able to see the slopes. So we got to connect some pipes down there with this work and then we have to ultimately bring it back on Main Street and end at the firehouse. There's actually a really iconic photograph from a repair in the early 1900s. Looks very similar to the location that we have open right now. So this connects to the egg shape this ravine sewer. Yep. And this is the end. This is the end of the ravine's masonry structure. It's a lot of water going through a really old pipe. It's sewage and wastewater, right? It is sewage right? and wastewater, but when it flows full, it's after a rainstorm. So it is very diluted. It's really mostly just rainwater at that point in time, but it's a lot of water, and water can cause damage quickly. Hydrological aspect of it that continues to uh, nag Burlington, because every time you get a big rainstorm, certain parts of the 
along the path of the ravine flood. And that corner on South Winooski and Main Street is the place where it's the worst. See all those squiggly lines? So the brook had lots of springs that fed into it. Yeah. So nature's still doing what it wants to do. The last 10 years of my tenure here, been doing a number of projects, including one that Laura led to improve the um, flooding in that area. We're not done. This is yet another step in the ra that direction. So the ravine sewer is about middle of the road right here. Oh, okay. Through the middle of the street. Through the through the street. Yep. Because this wasn't a street back then. This was this was an open area. There was no street. There was no street. There was no Winooski. Yep. Only White Street, which was further north of here. It is almost dead center of this pipe. Straight towards Decker Towers. Yeah. There are places in downtown where it's somewhat close to the surface, four to five feet. Uh, but then much of downtown, it's, you know, more than 20 feet below the surface. Again, oh, the smell. I smell, it's my familiar smell. 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 This is the section that we found railroad ties. So underneath the, the water and debris that's currently here, yeah. we found railroad ties. It's also cool, you can feel the heat. Mm -hmm. Wastewater is inherently warm. Oh yes, it's quite hot. <laughs> what are Everyone finding? wants to know. So this nice. one, 1870s. The dates from the 1870s, 1880s match the time in which the ravine and sections started to be filled for the ravine sewer. So Great Street's Main Street is not only improving the public realm for wider sidewalks and dedicated bike lanes and healthy street trees, but it is replacing the water main underneath Main Street from the 1880s and fixing the ravine sewer. I don't know, I think Burlington is beautiful now, so I can only imagine that it was beautiful then. Burlington's got so many great uh, historic buildings and sites. It's a great place to be. Learning about the ravine teaches us about the history of our city, and I can't wait to see what the future holds in this ever-changing landscape. We will get stuck in Vermont with you again, real soon. I love how enthusiastic you are. I got this. bit by the bug. It's, yeah, you did. It's not. Yeah, <laughs> I don't you know did. What it is about that ravine, yeah. but like, who thought? Like, who would think you would get that into? But it got me. I'm going to ring the bell at the College Street Congregational Church. <laughs> Give her all the pigeons. <laughs>